Communities around America and around the world continue to screech to a halt, with schools, businesses, and just about everything else closing down to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The U.S. government, alongside the Federal Reserve, is preparing to cushion the economic fallout with a good old stimulus plan, just like they did in 2008. But why is no one talking about the most important factor in all of this? Production. Let's discuss it here on the Two Day with Two Cents podcast. This podcast was brought to you by Spectre Defense and Weaponry. Check them out at SpectreDefenseAndWeaponry.com, linked in the description. Hello everyone, this is My Two Cents, and welcome back to the Two Day with Two Cents podcast. I hope everyone has been surviving this past week. I'm guessing that if you don't work at either a grocery store or a hospital, you've probably been told to stay home, or at least you've been working limited hours. And that seems to be what just about the entire country is doing, with certain states outright ordering that all businesses close their door, save for, save for those that are deemed essential. And I certainly don't want to beat a dead horse here, because I hosted a stream last week where we discussed the issue of the economy, and the previous two episodes of this podcast have also broadly focused on the issue of the economy in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, but I still felt this particular issue is too important not to discuss. So if you're not aware, uh, the Federal Reserve has already cut interest rates to zero, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we see negative interest rates before the end of the month. And Congress is in the process of deliberating on a so-called economic recovery package, which is really just a fancy name for a stimulus package, exactly like the one that was passed during the 2008 financial crisis, except this time it'll be orders of magnitude greater in the terms of the amount of money the Fed will create to try and cushion uh, the economy and prevent a recession. Of course, that's not going to happen. But what's important to note is that Republicans and Democrats alike are in favor of this package. Everyone, uh, even those conservatives that supposedly reject big government and are in favor uh, and are against this level of government intervention, uh, are still for this economic recovery package. They just disagree about how much they want the government to spend in its intervention. Uh, no one is really arguing that the government should not be cutting massive checks to everyone in America. They all agree that it should. They just disagree about whether everyone should get $1,000 or $3,000, or whether Corporation X should get bailed out, or whether Corporation Y should get bailed out. But all of Congress, Republicans and Democrats, seem to be in agreement that government should start bailing people out. And that includes large corporations, small businesses, student loans, even something that would very closely resemble Andrew Yang's $1,000 a month UBI. I mean, this is ridiculous. Now, what I found interesting is that even notable right-wing commentators like Ben Shapiro are arguing that there should be some form of government bailout. And in Shapiro's case, he argued that the reason there should be is because since government has ordered businesses to close their doors, uh, government is then obligated to provide just compensation to these businesses uh, because they've used their authority to stop those businesses from making money. I'm pretty sure that was in the Thursday edition of his podcast over at the Daily Wire for those that want to check it out. And at first glance, this may sound reasonable, because even most libertarians I know would say that if the government is going to shut you down, at least it's a nice gesture that they try to offer you compensation. I mean, it's still wrong to use force to circumvent the free actions of free people, but this is an emergency. It's a pandemic, right? And wouldn't it be worse if they just shut everyone down and didn't offer compensation? I mean, at least they're trying to help out these small businesses and corporations and individuals, right? Well, it might make sense if what the government actually offered was compensation. But the problem is most people either don't understand or they don't think hard enough about the fact that government stimulus does not, nor can it, save the economy. It didn't in 2008 and it's not going to now. And that's because the underlying issue that is making the economy suffer is a lack of production, which stimulus packages do nothing to alleviate. And to, uh, to borrow an example that I learned from Peter Schiff, think of it this way. Imagine a fictitious fishing village where fish are the only source of food. Now, there are other professions within the village, but when it comes to what people eat, the only thing they have to eat is fish, and that's what the fishermen provide at the market daily. 
But then the coronavirus hits our fictitious village and the government orders all businesses, including the fishermen, to just stay home to prevent the spread of the virus. Well, people get concerned and they say, well, how are we going to pay for food? So the central bank says, don't worry, we'll just start printing money and so that and we'll cut everybody a check so that even though your businesses aren't making any money, you'll still get the money you need to you know, pay rent and buy food and pay your student loans and cover all the cost of living, right? Well, the problem is since all businesses are closed, including the fishermen, that money doesn't do anyone any good because if they go to the fish market and discover that no one's been fishing, then there are no fish to buy, regardless of how much money they've just gotten in the mail. Well, okay, okay, let's reimagine this scenario. Suppose the fishermen are still going to work because they're deemed an essential service, but all other businesses are closed. So fish are the only source of food. Fishermen are clearly an essential service. So everyone else is told to stay home, but the fishermen, they can go to work. Well, this might seem to solve the problem, but follow this train of thought just a little bit further. The people then go to the market to buy fish with money they've received in the mail from the bank. Well, what are the fishermen going to do with that money? Every other business in town is shut down. So even if business is booming from their perspective, what are they going to spend that new money on? And further, what sort of value is being created by all these people just staying home? None. I mean, sitting at home waiting out the virus is not creating any tangible goods or services that anyone wants or will actually provide any value to the economy as a whole. And of course, what that means is that the money they've given to the fishermen for this fish is worthless. And it's not just because it's been printed out of uh, nothing in this case. It's worthless because it doesn't actually represent any time or effort that they've put into the economy. As it would if, for example, they were spending money that they'd received in exchange for, for providing a good or service as part of their job or part of their business. The money has just been printed into thin air by the bank and the fishermen are giving away fish they've worked to catch for nothing. Now, if they were doing this out of the goodness of their heart just to help the community in a time of crisis, fine. But they need to understand that up front. If they think they're getting paid, then they're going to discover a harsh reality when everyone starts going back to work and the economy starts to recover. And that is that all this new money they've received is worthless because all the government did was inflate the currency, create more money, hand it out so that people could keep buying. But as inevitably happens, when you increase the money supply, you, the value of money goes down. And in this case, when the government is talking about printing money on the order of trillions and trillions of dollars, they can only do that for so uh, for so long. In 2008, the Fed still had a bit of wiggle room, but at this point, they really don't. And there's and with no, with no underlying goods or services being produced, which is really the problem that existed even prior to the coronavirus. The coronavirus brought it to light, but we we had lack of production prior to this even happening. That it's what is inevitably going to happen is inflation, and that's where the economic the economic hurt is really going to begin. Uh, if these stimulus packages go through, everyone will start detecting it, not now when everyone's still staying home under threat of the virus, but when the threat finally dulls, or even if it doesn't, when people finally do start going back to work and businesses tr start trying to uh, start up again, that is when people are going to discover that all this money they've been receiving from the government is essentially worthless. Prices will shoot through the roof. And the uh, things everyone wants to buy will be more expensive by an order of magnitude, and the economic fallout will be far worse than what the government said would happen if they didn't issue any stimulus packages. <clears throat> and, and that's the irony is the all the government's really doing is postponing the economic fallout by issuing these kind of stimuluses. It's not going it, to, it might make people feel better in the short term, but it will only make the economic collapse far worse in the long term. So what can be done about all this? Uh, well, for one, the time to start preparing for this has already come and gone. But no matter who you are, it is never too late to start doing what you can. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is right now, if all your savings are currently in a bank or under your bed, uh, in saved in some national currency, get it out of there. Uh, when the inflation from this stimulus package hits, any savings you have that's in U.S. dollars or any other national currency is going to take a severe hit. It will not be as valuable as it, were, as it was even a month ago. Uh, you need to invest in precious metals and gold and silver. And I don't mean paper contracts. I mean actual physical gold and silver that you can put your hand on hand on, and lock up in your house. Because right now, the, the spot price of gold 
hasn't been spiking. It's actually gone down a little bit. And there are those that are saying, well, see, this proves that gold and silver don't really hold their value over time. But another thing people aren't considering is that a lot of the gold people own or gold and silver people own is in the form of gold and silver certificates. Just a piece of paper that says you own a piece of gold or silver that's in some vault over here. Well, of course, possession is nine tenths of the, law, of the law. When this economic collapse comes, that piece of paper isn't going to do you any good. You need the actual physical gold and silver. And hate to break it to you, but many people are probably going to discover that the uh, certificates they have for that gold and silver, either the gold and silver is not really there or they're not going to be able to get their hands on it. Another thing, uh, invest in real tangible goods that people want. Physical property that won't lose its utility over time. Uh, the currency will lose its uh, value very rapidly when the inflation hits, but at least the physical goods and services that people want and need, will, people will still need those and so they will retain their value if you invest in the right tangible goods and services. And then finally, of course, it's not, I'm sure you've already uh, figured this out, but it is not a bad idea to keep a supply of canned foods and other basic necessities uh, as much as you can store uh, to try and wait out when the food riots and other things that are going to result from this hyperinflation and economic fallout begin. And uh, speaking of preparation, you should also have firearms and ammunition to protect yourself and your loved ones from harm, which brings me to this podcast sponsor, Spectre Defense. Spectre Defense is an online arms dealership run by Nate McLaughlin. He specializes in and accepts commissions for customized firearms, swords, knives, etc. Nate is also hoping to reverse engineer many high-tech firearms and share their blueprints online. If he makes enough on Patreon, he plans to get a metal 3D printer. Also, in what he's dubbed the Dinner Blaster Project, Nate is seeking to reverse engineer the U.S. military's Special Combat Assault Rifle, or SCAR. So if you're interested in acquiring a custom arms commission, or just want to support his work, check out SpectreDefenseAndWeaponry.com, linked in the description. It's always important, but especially now, to have the tools you need to protect you and your loved ones from harm. So check out Spectre Defense and Weaponry. Anyways, enough time for chit chat. Time for the weekly hottie. Drum roll, please. This week's weekly hottie is Instagram and YouTube model Ari Dugarte. All her videos are in Spanish, which isn't my strong suit, but you don't need to understand what she's saying to know she's a looker. Here is Ari Dugarte. Right, that's it for this week's podcast be sure to like comment share and subscribe stay safe do what you can to prepare and just as an aside i don't want anyone to panic panic is absolutely not what we want to do right now but there really is no stopping the pending economic collapse at this point all we can do is prepare so stay safe be strong live free and everything else and that is my two cents take it for what it's worth Everyone, please take a moment to subscribe to My Two Cents on the BitTubers and BitChute platforms. YouTube has shown that it is no longer a viable platform for independent content creators, and we need to build a presence elsewhere before the inevitable censorship comes. The links to both profiles are available in the BitTubers tab on my website, mytwocentsvideos.com.
Thanks everyone for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, as well as hit the bell to receive notifications so that you never miss an upload. And if you're a fan of my channel, please consider supporting me on Subscribestar, Bitbacker, or Patreon to receive special rewards. All links can be found in the About section of my website, mytwocentsvideos.com.